Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always. And today we're going to take a look at using the Lantern Targeting Pod in the F-14B Tomcat from the front seat. Now this is a video that has been heavily requested in the comment section of my YouTube, on Discord, and other places. So I figured now would be as good of a time as any to uh, bring this video to you guys. So there is a mod that you can download, and I have the link to it down in the description below that allows the pilot in the F-14 Tomcat to actually use the Lantern Pod in the F-14B Tomcat. Now, this isn't a mod that reconfigures the cockpit of the F-14 or anything like that. It doesn't affect the 3D models, it doesn't affect the textures or anything like that. All it simply does is uh, migrate the controls from the uh, Rio pit to the uh, pilot pit, or actually a better word would be rather duplicate rather than migrate, as it's, as it's just a, like a control C, a copy paste kind of thing. And it's just one small uh, controls file that is affected here, so it doesn't break any integrities or anything like that, and is perfect for you guys who want to fly uh, strike and drop laser guided bombs in the F-14B Tomcat, but you don't have a friend to fly with you as a Rio. Now this is, mod has been very cool, and I have definitely used it a lot, and I'm a, definitely a fan of it, as it allows me to have complete control over the aircraft, so um, when I'm flying in big missions and things like that, and I'm taking video, and it allows me to make sure things just go as uh, smoothly and as to plan as absolutely possible without throwing in the added um, uh, you know, wild card of having a human being controlling the targeting pod and things like that. Which is not to say that uh, having a second guy in the backseat isn't a, an absolute blast in the F-14. It's just for the simple fact that I know that some people don't have uh, friends that they can fly with. And I simply like the control while I'm uh, recording a mission. So, um, everything is exactly the same. It's simply a duplication of the controls into the pilot uh, controls for the F-14, like I said. And so the process of turning the pod on, getting it aligned... Um, uh, unstowing the pod, arming the laser, firing a laser, dropping a bomb, um, guiding that laser, or guiding the bomb to its target, all these kinds of things, it's all exactly the same. It's just that you're doing it from the front seat and you can't actually see the lantern control stick um, in the front seat like you can in the back seat. So that's all it is. So why don't we go ahead and step in the office and get started with the video. So we'll go ahead and do the rest of this video from the front seat here. But let's hop into the back for one quick second to take a look at something. When we hop into the back, we can see that the lantern control stick is in a very awkward spot in the uh, Rio seat. So you are not haven't been looking at the controls if, you, if you've been flying as a Rio and dropping laser-guided bombs as the Rio in the F-14 before. So you've effectively been doing this whole uh, evolution of uh, key commands to get to the point where you can laze and drop a bomb anyway without looking at the controls because there really isn't much to look at down there anyhow. So it shouldn't be too foreign for you guys hopping from the back seat to the front seat and using this mod. So let's go ahead and continue the rest of the video from the front seat here like I said and we'll go ahead and take on off and get ready to get ready for a bomb run here. And here we go. Up and away. I guess that ship got a little close there. Whoops. A little issue with the mission editor. <laughs> so now that we've got a positive rate of climb and we're off the deck of the ship, um, we'll go ahead and turn towards our first waypoint out there. Looks like it's about 47 miles away, so that should be plenty of time to get our pod turned on, aligned, and functional. So we'll go ahead and I like to just cruise in air-to-air -air mode. Um, I don't find that I get anything out of cruising in um, cruise mode just because the heading tape kind of gets in the way and it's just, just not as clean looking. So we'll go ahead and throw her into autopilot here and we'll keep that uh, climb going up. So first thing we need to do here is take a look at our key binds for the lantern pod. So let's go ahead and hit escape. We'll go to adjust controls here and take a look here. We're in F-14B pilot, but if we scroll on down, we can see we now have a new lantern control panel uh, 
section to our controls now that we have this mod installed. And so the way I like to set it up is very, very similar to the way I have it set up for my Rio seat. In fact, exactly the same, only that instead of everything being simply uh, mapped to a switch, it's now mapped to a switch via a uh, modifier, which is very, very easy and simple to use. Um, if you have the F18 uh, stick grip, the regular Warthog stick grip, or any other uh, major brand uh, stick these days, Verpal, VKB, um, Satek, uh, whatever it, sh it would be, there's usually a button down at the bottom near your pinky, and I tend to use that as my modifier. I think it works very well and is a very good place and convenient place to have a modifier. So for the two uh, operations that you're really only going to use once, I tend to put the power on the I button, I key on my keyboard, and the unstow on the O key on my keyboard. And so that is just an easy thing to remember. Um, for whatever reason, for me, my kind of mind tick is um, if you have ever flown Flaming Cliffs jets, the radar on and IO sy system on is the I key and the O key. I meant to say EO there. <laughs> Not sure where I got that from. Um, and then the rest of it is simply on my HOTAS. And as you can see, I literally have everything bound for um, my... Uh, my lantern control set up to my HOTAS here. I've got uh, the S4 hat uh, all modeled and whatnot, uh, including a press here on my F18 stick. I've got um, the point track, area track, laser latched, laser arm toggle. Uh, that's why these two are not uh, uh, bound currently. It's because I have a toggle set, so that way I can just switch between uh, safe and armed at using one button. It's a bit of a safe uh, space saver there. I've got uh, air to ground and nav slash air to air mode. Um, good to go. No modifier on that one since I had an extra rocker switch on my uh, throttle here. I've got uh, my Q waypoint plus or minus. Um, that is uh, uh, bound. I've got lantern slew. That's, of course, extremely important, and that's bound. I've got uh, the Lantern Slider. That's bound. Um, again, unmodified since I had another kind of uh, rocker switch on my uh, uh, HOTAS that was empty, as well as I have a Toggle Lantern uh, slash TCS Select button here, which is always incredibly important because that switches your display in the cockpit, uh, the pilot cockpit to switch between a TCS display and showing the Lantern display. So let's go ahead and head back to the cockpit here and we'll go ahead and turn our pod on. So listen very carefully as I hit the I key here. We just heard a little like kind of a click and that is the very nice sounds of the Rio pit behind us of the Rio hitting that button that turns the pod on and it's starting to power up. The gyros in the pod are starting to uh, spin up to speed to align the pod and all these kinds of things. And while we're waiting for that, we can go ahead and uh, get our front seat cockpit here ready to go. Um, also do note that this mod does not interfere with the operation of Jester in any way um, that I have noticed so far, um, so keep that in mind. Um, although we all do know that Jester can be a little finicky at times, so um, if you, your mileage may uh, vary on that. Um, and we still got a positive rate of climb. We've got the uh, autopilot on. We'll pull the throttle back a little bit to uh, keep us about uh, 375 knots. So at this point is the point where you kind of have to trust it that everything is working. Um, if you have been a Rio in the back seat of an F-14, you kind of, I'm sure you guys have experienced the same thing, where the it's kind of just a matter of uh, trusting that the pod is aligning um, and turning on and all of that good stuff. Um, the way I like to keep track of it is I'll pull out my uh, iPhone and I'll put in an eight minute timer. And once it hits about eight minutes after I press the I key, I know that the pod should be um, aligned and powered on and ready to unstow. And we can go ahead and flip over to the uh, TCS slash lantern view using that toggle switch here. And as we toggle that, we see a blank screen. Now this is the part where you tend to get a little bit paranoid as you're waiting and waiting and waiting for that. But uh, we know that it'll be ready and for us and uh, good to go when we see a not ready pop up at the top of the screen in green writing. Um, doesn't mean anything's wrong or broken. It actually means the pod is, is uh, turned on and ready for unstow. So using the YouTube magic here, I'll go ahead and speed this up for you guys so you don't have to watch the whole thing.
Alrighty. So we've gone ahead and flown out towards our target area and we have entered an orbit a little bit offset from the target area so that we can keep our pod uh, turning on and uh, good to go. We're going to go ahead and unstow our pod now, now that we have not ready popped up on our lantern display here on the uh, v, uh, VDI display here in the pilot seat. So just like we would do in the Rio seat, um, we'll simply unstow the pod. So listen again. We can hear another little click from the back seat as we hit the O key um, that we have bound. And now we know that the pod is unstowing. This usually takes what, from what I've kind of measured to be roughly between uh, 30 and 45 seconds, depending on, I guess, a couple different factors. But uh, usually it's more or less closer to 30 seconds. Um, you can time this if you want so you don't get too paranoid, because um, I always get kind of like, oh crap, what did I do wrong here? Um, as I'm waiting for that to unstow. Usually when I'm flying a really long and busy mission though, by the time um, it, you know, I'm pressing the buttons and stuff, I'm so busy with other things in the cockpit that uh, I always look down and I'm like, oh great, it's ready to go for me. And so we're just entering a little uh, target area offset here. Um, we've got uh, a couple targets laid out for us on the abandoned airfield behind us, so it should be a, a pretty easy place to find the targets. So we'll keep this orbit up, waiting for that pod to unstow here. And I don't really see this as being a cheat or anything like that. I think it's just a good way to give uh, players of DCS World who really, really enjoy the F-14 Tomcat a bit more flexibility in the way they use it, because hopping back and forth between the two cockpits and single player is really just kind of a stinky option as well as if you want to jump into multiplayer and you can't find anyone to fly as a Rio for you, or you just want to fly by yourself, this is another really good option for you. But I do know that of course purists will be wildly offended by the fact that a pilot is controlling the lantern pod in the F-14. But uh, that's neither here nor there. And of course, as you're seeing in my video here, using the autopilot in the F-14 is definitely your friend. Um, just like when you're dropping laser guided bombs in the Hornet, uh, the autopilot in the F-14 really, really helps. You can see we have a very, very nice orbit going. Our VSI is right at zero. Just maintaining altitude as we orbit around here, waiting for our pod to unstow. Alrighty. I was getting a little bit paranoid there too that uh, my pod wasn't working, but uh, as we can see that it will eventually work for you, you just gotta kinda trust it. Um, and it's really no different than when you're flying as a Rio in the backseat of the Tomcat, you really have no uh, indication as to when the pod is going to be unstowed and ready to go. You just have to trust that it takes a certain amount of time for it to be ready to go, and that's all I, there is to it. So. Um, like I said, and have said in previous videos, the lantern pod that's on our F-14 here is one of the more of the first generation type uh, targeting pods that were out there. And so as a result, the video resolution and the zoom functionality is not as good. However, I will still uh, contend that the F-14B is probably the best strike fighter um, in DCS at the moment, and probably the best FAC-A aircraft in DCS at the moment even with the reduced resolution of the targeting pod due to its uh, payload capabilities being able to sling uh, four like GBU-10s very, very easily, as well as the fuel carriage capacity in the F-14. Its range and endurance is just unrivaled by anything else in DCS world and really won't be until we get uh, RASBAM's uh, F-15E Strike Eagle. So just like you would in the rear seat of the Tomcat, we'll go ahead and throw her into air-to-ground mode. Right now she's in Q HUD mode, um, and a lot of people neglect Q HUD mode. I think it is a fantastic mode in, in which to find targets, um, and just completely blows away other modes like Q Snow Plow. Um, Snow Plow really just doesn't do anything for me. Um, it probably is really useful in real life, but in a simulation like DCS, for me, it doesn't really uh, uh, have much going for it. 
But in QHUD mode, what the pod is slaved to is the dot in the center of the datum line on our HUD up here. So if you're looking for, say, a moving column of armored vehicles or trucks or something like that, you simply just need to put your HUD, the dot in your datum line on your HUD onto where you think those targets are, look down, zoom in the pod, oh, there they are, quickly uh, squeeze the trigger to laze that and designate a target, throw it into Q designate mode, and now the pod will be latched onto there, and that way you can come around and set up and for an attack on that moving uh, convoy. So we've got some targets out here on the abandoned airstrip out here by Cabaletti. Um, I'm sure everyone knows that uh, there's more bombs dropped there than probably anywhere in the universe at this point. Uh, probably even more than the uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail at this point, really. Whoop, just had a little track IR freak out there for a second, but we should be good to go now. So we'll go ahead and take her out of autopilot mode and we'll fly on out towards our waypoint. And we'll go ahead and start queuing waypoint two. So just like a Rio would in the backseat, you can queue different waypoints that the targeting pod will snap to, which is certainly, certainly an advantage over um, the targeting pods in the Harrier and the Hornet at the moment. And it's very, very nice when you're in a very highly defended area, you need to drop a laser guided bomb onto like a static strategic target. You have a waypoint near that target, queue up the waypoint and Presto, there it is, and you're good to go. So we can see our field of view starting to come out into the right spot here. And we're literally doing everything that a pilot and, and Rio combination would be doing just simply from the front seat. And we're zooming in. And so we can zoom in, but we can see, even with that low resolution all the way out here, that there really isn't much in the way of targets out there. So why don't we go ahead and do it the harder way, is we'll go ahead and throw her back to Q HUD mode, and we'll go ahead and zoom the pod back out a little bit, and we can see that uh, as a demonstration here, the the pod really is locked onto the line, the dot in the datum line of the HUD, as it's pointing right ahead into these trees out here on that hill in front of us. So we'll go ahead and look for that, uh, whoop, we'll pop the autopilot off. We'll look for the abandoned airstrip, using our HUD and just uh, our visual skills looking for that nice big concrete X out there. The changes that ED has done recently in terms of the way targets render has made a massive, massive difference in using targeting pods, not just the lantern pod and the Tomcat, but the pod on the A-10, the AV-8, and the F-18. It really makes a huge difference now that static objects and terrain objects actually populate at a good distance now. And we can, of course, see that we've got... Why don't we pause it here for a second, just for illustration purposes. We can see that our datum line dot is r roughly close to that. We can see in our... Uh, HUD that it's looking at this kind of line of trees here and we can see just a little bit of that runway so all we need to do is just walk the jet on over to the runway over there and we should be good to go. So we'll zoom on back out to a more normal zoom and we'll keep locking our jet over onto the X. Now this is definitely a lot of teamwork when you're doing it with a human Rio or like they did it in real life but this works just as well. We'll go ahead and arm the laser and we will designate a target here and we'll go S4 hat right to throw it in uh, Q designate mode. This mode is really nice and, and I wish and I hope that there is something coming that is very much like this mode uh, to the targeting pod in the AV-8 and the F-18 is now that we have a point designated out there with a laser and we've got a uh, uh, these uh, director lines up here on the HUD, I'm sorry, on the lantern pod feed, uh, and we put it into Q designate mode, the pod will be continuously locked onto that point. Uh, no matter what I do, I can maneuver as violently as I want, um, make as quick of maneuvers as I want. I'm dodging a SAM, I'm now uh, fighting an enemy interceptor that's uh, jumped me, something like that, um, and that pod will snap right back to that point no matter what which is fantastic, because currently 
the uh, AV8 and F18 uh, lightning pods will continuously walk farther and farther away from that target the more violently you maneuver um, as you are trying to uh, you know dodge a SAM, interceptor, what have you. So let's continue the bomb run and we'll go ahead and zoom on in and we can see that we've got some targets down there so no matter we'll go ahead and throw the autopilot on and we'll throw her into area mode and we'll go ahead and slew over one of these targets. Obviously it's harder to tell because of that low resolution what these targets actually are. We'll redesignate that point and we'll throw her back into Q designate mode. And we're good to go there. So now all we need to do is simply tell Jester to Set up our GBU 10s. And just to demonstrate this for you guys, we can see that no matter how hard I pull or how quick I roll, the pod likes to move around as you can see, as it, as it can't fully keep up, but it always snaps right back to that same point that we designated with the Q designate mode, which is really, really fantastic and a fantastic option. Now, of course, you don't necessarily want to always follow my lead. You definitely want to make sure you have your weapons set up and ready to go prior to your flying into your target area. So that's uh, my mistake. Uh, don't follow that example. So we'll come around again. Now when it comes to dropping laser guided bombs, whether it's the lantern pod in the Tomcat, or the lightning pod in the FA-18, or the AV-8, it's all about patience. Making sure that you give yourself enough room to work with making sure that you're not gonna have any clouds in your way, making sure that you're squared away and good to go as well as you possibly can. And of course, other things you may need to do with the lantern pod in the F-14 you can do through the pilot control mod just as you would do in the Rio seat such as swapping uh, laser codes, white hot, black hot, all these kinds of things that you would want or need to do to effectively employ laser guided weapons. So we'll come around for a pass here. We'll get master arm turned on. And we've got a good lane in here without any clouds. And we can see that, for the most part, the pod did not walk away from our selected target. We'll throw her into autopilot mode again, and just like you would do in we are just sweeten up our targeting solution there. I threw it from point track into designated mode again, just to make sure that we don't have any issues. I always, always like to drop in queue designate mode simply because I know it's going to stay there and it's not going to walk from for me. And we're getting close. We're nearly five seconds from release. We're still lining up the jet. And bombs away. We'll wait a little bit until we're roughly got 15 seconds to impact and then we will fire our laser. Now, of course, the GBU-10 is a bit of overkill for a little truck sitting on the ground here, but it'll look cool in the video feed from our lantern. So we'll go ahead and latch the laser. Make sure our laser is in, our weapon is tracking, which it looks like it is. Got the, the laser latch still. 
and impact. And we'll turn the latch off for the laser by pulling the trigger with that modifier to the first detent, and we're good to go. Now, when it comes to reattacking, I like to keep it in queue designate mode, especially if I've got targets in a more or less general vicinity. I can fly away from the target, uh, do what I need to do, avoid SAMs, deal with interceptors, look for wingmen, maneuver any way I need to maneuver. And with that queue designate mode turned on, I will be able to come back and, uh, and have that uh, lantern pod looking at the same general direction, which is very, very nice. Another thing that the F-14's lan older lantern pod has going for it, which is also very, very nice, is the masking line around the screen here, and as well as the masking dot. Uh, that's just something that's not present in the uh, lightning pod simulations in the AV-8 and the F-A-18, which I think is just a fantastic thing to have. So, if you like the video, and you like flying the F-14, you like using this mod, uh, check out uh, my one-on-one -on -one training video that I've done on the Lantern Pilot Control mod with one of my patrons not too long ago, uh, where he went from zero in the first video to hero in the second time we got together for a one-on-one -on -one training session, and now he's dropping bombs all over the place using the Pilot Control mod for the Lantern Pod in the F-14B with no problems. So, thanks a lot guys, hope you liked the video, please like and subscribe.